Okay, so yesterday I looked into some claims made by Hardware Canucks. They claimed that the new Arc B580 from Intel doesn't play too nice with older CPUs. And I found that their claims were correct. Now, a lot of you appreciated how quick I was to verify their findings, while others didn't appreciate the bad news. Now look, I get it. I was also super excited about the B580. And since then, I've minimized my sleep so I can get you more data, as well as address some of the misconceptions surrounding this testing and the overhead issue. First, let's talk about resizable bar, but I won't get into what it is or how it works. Really for now, all we need to know is that the Intel Arc GPUs, absolutely without question, they need resizable bar or rebar enabled to function correctly. Now, rebar support was officially rolled out with Intel's Comet Lake and AMD's Zen 3 generations, but it actually predates these products as it's a PCI Express 2.0 feature and therefore can be enabled using the correct BIOS version on platforms and processors utilizing PCI 2.0 or better. And this means parts like the Ryzen 5 2600, which I use for my testing, does support resizable bar. And as noted in my video, it was enabled and working. Still, despite this, an overwhelming number of people have claimed that the poor B580 performance shown in yesterday's video is because the Ryzen 5 2600 doesn't support resizable bar. However, neither of those things are true. The 2600 does support resizable bar, and the bad performance isn't related to rebar, though disabling rebar does destroy the B580. Let's take a look at that now. Testing with Space Marine 2 shows that the 2600 with the B580 is 82% faster with rebar enabled, while the 1% lows saw a 127% increase. Meanwhile, the RTX 4060 performance goes unchanged, delivering the same results with or without rebar enabled. Starfield shows the same thing. The 2600 with the B580 is 50% faster with rebar enabled, or 300% faster when looking at the 1% lows. Again, the RTX 4060 isn't phased if rebar is enabled or not. The performance hit in Spider-Man Remastered is nowhere near as significant, but even so, the 2600 with the B580 was 15% faster with rebar enabled. Then we have Hogwarts Legacy, where the 2600 slash B580 combo was 127% faster with rebar enabled. So as you just saw, I did test the Ryzen 5 2600 with resizable bar enabled, and it was certainly working. So rather, the issue here is, as I carefully explained in the previous video, that the B580 requires more of your CPU to work, as in CPU utilization will be greater with the B580 than competing GPUs such as the Radeon RX 7600 or GeForce RTX 4060. So that is to say, there is an overhead issue. So I hope those results put that misconception to bed, and now we can move on to some additional testing. Another criticism some people had of both the hardware Canucks and my own testing was that we're using seven-year-old CPUs. I'm not really sure uh, why testing an entry-level GPU with an old budget CPU is so outlandish. And if you think there aren't boatloads of gamers still using the Ryzen 5 2600 or similar hardware to game, I'm not really sure what to tell you other than you might want to reevaluate that one. Anyway, not to get sidetracked by all that, I think we need to focus on what the point is. And the point of this content from Hardware Canucks and myself was to alert people to the very real fact that if they're using a much older or slower CPU, the B580 likely won't be nearly as good as pretty much all the reviews are saying they are, mine included. The testing has also clearly exposed an issue with the Arc architecture, that being that it requires significantly more of your CPU to work which will reduce or possibly eliminate any CPU headroom you might have had. Now, all of that said, it is true, if you have a more powerful CPU, this issue is going to be far less severe and possibly not an issue at all. And not only that, but as I explained in the previous video, and Hardware Canucks also demonstrated this with a series of benchmarks, when using a slower CPU, the overhead problem won't always be a problem. And in fact, more often than not, it won't be an issue at all. The reason for this is because most games aren't that CPU demanding, at least not to the degree that we see in titles such as Hogwarts Legacy, Cyberpunk 2077, or Space Marine 2, for example. There are modern games that are very light on your CPU, and therefore they won't exhibit this issue. But as you might have guessed, 
games will continue to become more CPU demanding. So while you might not see the B580 overhead issue right now, you could very well run into this problem with future titles. Now, in an effort to better demonstrate this problem, I'm again going to test just a few select CPU demanding titles, but this time I'll be using a wider range of CPUs. CPUs such as the Ryzen 5 7600, the 5600, 3600, and even the Ryzen 7 5700X3D, all with resizable bar enabled and working. I would like to, of course, test a range of Intel CPUs, but, you know, I do like to sleep. It's the weekend as well, so I'm hoping I can probably possibly see my family tomorrow. So I think the CPUs I've got now will, will paint a picture and start steering us in the right direction. And But of course, there is much more testing that still needs to be done, but it's going to have to wait for another weekend. And I'll talk more about the additional testing that I'd like to do towards the end of the video. For now, let's go over the data that we currently have. Starting with Space Marine 2, we see that the RTX 4060 sees no performance loss when downgrading the CPU from the 9800X3D right down to the Ryzen 5 5600, as the performance here is still GPU limited. Now, although the performance should also be GPU limited with the B580, the added overhead increases CPU load, so much so that the CPU becomes the performance limiting component for many of these configurations. And as a result, from the 9800X3D to the Ryzen 5 5600, we're looking at a 15% performance reduction, meaning that whereas the B580 was 16% slower than the RTX 4060 when using the 9800X3D, it's a massive 28% slower when using the Ryzen 5 5600. And interestingly, that margin is roughly maintained with the Ryzen 5 3600. Here the B580 is 29% slower, but then falls off a cliff with the 2600 blowing out to a 40% margin. So as expected, as the CPU performance increases, the overhead problem becomes less of an issue. But even with the 5600, it's still an issue, and we even saw some performance degradation when using the 5700X3D. The B580 does struggle with 1% lows in Starfield, even with the 9800X3D, and although we're only seeing a 10% drop off with the Ryzen 5 5600, that's still a significant performance loss that the RTX 4060 doesn't suffer. So whereas the B580 was 20% slower than the 4060 when using the 9800X3D, it's 28% slower with the 5600. Now the Hogwarts Legacy data is interesting. Here the B580 and RTX 4060 are comparable when using the 9800X3D, and even the Ryzen 5 7600. But as we step down to the 5700X3D, we really start to notice the 1% lows of the B580 fall away. And this was somewhat evident with the Ryzen 5 7600. But with the 5700X3D, we're now down 24%, despite the average frame rate remaining the same. Then, with the Ryzen 5 5600, the average frame rate starts to slip just 4% down on the RTX 4060. But again, it's the 1% lows that are hit the hardest, dropping by 21% and that is quite problematic. And this trend continues to worsen with the 3600 and then the 2600. But this is the most eye-opening data that I've come across yet when exploring this issue. And I assure you, as hard as it is to believe, this data is accurate. Testing with Spider-Man Remastered originally found the B580 to be an impressive 20% faster than the RTX 4060. That was a really great result for the Arc GPU. But again, this is seen when using the 9800X3D, and I've since triple checked this data. It is correct. So the 9800X3D data is correct. It's really that much faster with this CPU. But shockingly, when stepping down to the Ryzen 5 7600, the results flip, and now the RTX 4060 is 11% faster than the 5080. This is crazy to see, and it means performance for the RTX 4060 it doesn't really change from the 7600 to the 9800X3D, but the B580 is 33% faster when using the 9800X3D, opposed to the 7600. And worse still, if we drop down to the Ryzen 5 5600, the RTX 4060 is now 46% faster than the B580, and we saw a similar margin with the 3600. Performance of the B580 then falls apart using the 2600, and look, you can blame the 2600 all you like for being slow, but damn, the RTX 4060 was still very playable here, averaging a smooth 78 FPS. So based on all of that data, two things are now clear. The B580 has a very real and quite serious CPU overhead issue. 
and I need to re-review it using something like a Ryzen 5 5600. I put out a poll, it looks like the Ryzen 5 5600 is the CPU that the majority of you want to see me use, so that's what I'll be using. But truth be told, I'm not really sure what all of this means right now for the B580 and our recommendation of this product. There are quite a few factors to consider here, and I'll admit, right now, I just don't have enough information to make any recommendations at this point. I suppose other than to recommend you just wait for more data before you buy, and thankfully, due to poor availability, you really have no choice but to wait anyway. It's worth noting that while the B580 scaled much worse than the RTX 4060 when using the Ryzen 5 5600 and the select range of CPU limited games that I featured in this video, it will likely stack up in a more favorable light, let's say at 1440p, which really has been the case to date anyway. In fact, this overhead issue very clearly demonstrates why the B580 is much more competitive at the 1440p resolution than it is at 1080p, even with a high-end CPU. And that really does explain why Intel was so hell-bent on pushing this as a 1440p product. So it could very well be a situation where those using a CPU like the Ryzen 5 5600, who are gaming at 1440p, will still find the B580 to be of exceptional value when compared to a part like the RTX 4060. Or it could be a situation where the margin to a part like the Radeon RX 7600 is reduced by this overhead issue to a degree that doesn't really make sense to save that 10 to $20 on the Arc GPU, and instead you should go with the RX 7600, even if it is compromised with just eight gigabytes of VRAM. Also, as a quick side note, the best way to test GPUs, even mid-range to low-end GPUs, is with a high-end CPU. The B580 is the exception here, not the rule. Testing GPUs with a CPU bottleneck will more often than not result in misleading data. And yeah, look, GeForce GPUs, they do require more CPU cycles than Radeon GPUs, but for the most part, the difference is quite small, even with reasonably low-end CPUs. So it's rare that you'll highlight the overhead issue with the GeForce GPUs to a significant degree. But unfortunately with Arc, it is significantly worse. And your chances of running into this limitation in real-world test scenarios, or real-world gaming scenarios rather, it's much higher which is what makes the B580 the exception. This is of course important information to know, which is why follow-up testing is so crucial. And again, great work by Hardware Canucks for being the first, at least that I'm aware of, to highlight this issue. And if I'm honest, I was still months away from getting to this content, largely because I have the biggest stack of motherboards you've ever seen sitting just over there. And you'll be getting that content in about a week maybe two weeks from now at most, but it's, it's a very long video, lots of motherboards, and I have lots of other motherboard series that I'll be covering as well. So, and that's just mixed in with the CPU and GPU stuff that I'm doing. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, I've been very busy, so get off my back. <laughs> there is a shipload of content though coming, and you know, I am just one man. So this really is a community effort. So again, great work by others who have discovered this stuff, and we've just done our best to add to the conversation. Anyway, that is going to do it for now. Uh, nothing really else, else to say about this one. Again, I've done the poll. The Ryzen 5 5600 is the CPU I will be using for my retest uh, or re-review. I guess it is a retest and a re-review of the Intel Arc B580, which I'm, well, I will, I promise you guys, I'll get that out this week because uh, although availability is poor right now, it, it's likely to pick up soon and you'll be able to buy one more readily and I want you guys to have as much information as you can by the time you go to purchase. So no one with a Ryzen 5 2600 gets stung with a, a B580 because that would be a bad idea. In that case, probably get a, a used GPU or something like an RX 7600. But yeah, you want a Radeon or a GeForce GPU. Anyway, I am lacking sleep and as a result, tending to waffle. So I'm just going to wrap it up here. You appreciate what we do. We've got the join button, Patreon. Check that uh, stuff out if you're interested. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.